Hi guys, this is jsangon.com and I'm here with the Microsoft Lumia 640 XL LTE for a full review. This is a mid-range phablet that was announced back in March, released in April, and it's priced at $240 on the international market. This is the bigger version of the 5-inch Lumia 640 and it has a 3G version, a 4G version, and there is also a dual SIM version of the handset. So let's discuss the design of this phablet. It has a glossy polycarbonate case that comes in white and a few other colors. It measures 9mm in thickness, which means it's thicker than the HTC Desire 820 that measures 7.7mm. It's also thicker than the Huawei Honor 6 Plus that measures 7.5mm. And also it weighs 171 grams, which makes it heavier than the Honor 6 Plus from Huawei that weighs 165 grams and also heavier than the HTC Desire 820 that weighs 155 grams. By the way, um, it's heavier than those but pretty much the same weight as the iPhone 6 Plus plus or minus 1 gram. This model is also very wide as you can see. So let's see from the back. As I said, very wide. It measures 81.5 millimeters in width, which is 3 millimeters wider than the iPhone 6 Plus. You can barely grab it with one hand, and my hand is big, so smaller hands will have a problem. It's slightly slippery, thanks to its glossy polycarbonate shell, and it's made in Vietnam, as the inside of the phone says. It's not very easy to use with one hand, as you can see right here, you're totally going to need two hands. However, if you're using it in landscape, it's an excellent experience. I have to say that it has angular edges, some people may not dig this feeling of uh, keeping your fingers on an angular edge, but this is made of plastic, not metal, so it doesn't cut into your palm. It has a solid design, but this phone is kind of prone to cracks. After removing and putting back the shell, let's say 10 or 20 times, you'll inevitably crack it, that may happen by mistake. At the front, we got the earpiece right here at the top, front camera, some sensors here, and we don't have any virtual buttons. Excuse me, we don't have capacitive buttons, we have these virtual buttons here, so nothing in this area. So overall at the front we have big bezels here next to the screen, you can see them right here. And we also have the earpiece, front camera and sensors, and the uh, facade is a bit of a fingerprint magnet, I have to say that. At the back we got the polycarbonate shell, it's a wraparound case that can be removed and replaced. We have the protruding main camera. You can see it sticks out a bit. We have the LED flash and the speaker right here plus the Microsoft and Zeiss logo. Okay, now in order to remove the shell, you have to start from the bottom right, from what I've heard. Apparently it's easier that way. And indeed it is compared to what I tried out in the unboxing where I had a lot of trouble with removing the shell. Okay, so here we go, we removed it and below the shell you can find the battery and you can find the micro SD card slot and micro SIM card slot right here. You can only access them if you remove the battery, so there's that. Okay, so this is the back side. Okay, and now at the top we find the audio jack and at the bottom we find the micro USB port, nothing on the left side, while on the right we got the volume buttons and on off button, all of them with excellent feedback, they're made of plastic from what I can feel. Overall the design of this tablet feels pretty much okay for a mid-ranger, but the phone is very wide and small hands will not dig that, especially since the device is kind of slippery. Now we're done with the design, as far as the hardware is concerned, we're getting here a display that has a diagonal of 5.7 inches, it's an IPS LCD with a resolution of 1280 over 720 pixels. Inside the phone, there is a quad-core Qualcomm Snapdragon 400 processor, clocked at 1.2 GHz, and the GPU is an Adreno 305. You also get 8 GB of storage here, of which you will have free about 4 GB. There is also 1 GB of RAM inside, and the microSD card slot can support up to 128 GB of storage. At the front of the phone, there is a 5 megapixel camera for selfies. At the back, there is a 13 megapixel camera that will take the main shots. Connectivity wise, we're getting 4G LTE with a max download speed of 150 mega per second. There is micro USB, GPS, GLONASS, there is Bluetooth 4.0, NFC, Wi Fi, BGN, and uh, there's also DLNA in case you're wondering. Um, I have to say that this model 
also has an exchangeable back cover so if you want to replace it you can easily do that and probably change its color as well. In the meantime let me list you the sensors we have here ambient light sensor, accelerometer, prox um, proximity sensor, magnetometer and something called sensor core that should be able to detect your motion and your steps and things like that. Okay, now as far as the battery is concerned, what we're getting here is a lithium ion unit with a capacity of 3000 mAh. It's a 3.8 volt battery and it has a 11.4 watt hour capacity. On paper, it should give you about 37 days of standby. It should also give you 30 hours of talk time, about 98 hours of music playback or 10.7 hours of video. Well, in our test that usually involves uh, HD video playback in a loop with Wi-Fi on and brightness of 200 lux we achieved a time of 9 hours and 49 minutes pretty much so it was 9 hours and 49 minutes of HD video playback with Wi-Fi on and brightness of 50% or better said at 200 lux which is quite good we beat the Galaxy Note 3 that scores 9 hours and 30 minutes and we also beat the Huawei Honor 6 Plus that scores 9 hours and 12 minutes. Still we scored below the Galaxy S5 for example that achieves 11 hours and 4 minutes. Keep in mind we got almost 10 hours here. The charging is quite long. This model will require 4 hours of charging. Um, it's also almost the longest handset when it comes to charging that we measured so far. Um, it's on par with another handset, the OVP6 Energy that we tested and it reaches once again 4 hours. In the meantime, for example, an iPhone 6 Plus charges in 3 hours and 16 minutes and the Philips Xenium i908 is actually the longest charger I've ever tested 4 hours and 25 minutes, which is uncomfortable because leaving the phone off to charge for 4 hours is a bit annoying. Of course, we have uh, battery saving features. So let's check those out. Trying to find them here, battery saver here somewhere, probably missed it. That's the problem with those settings from Windows Phone, maybe Windows 10 they'll change a bit. Here we go, battery saver is pretty straightforward. You first have an estimation here, conserve battery life is off now, you can activate it at under 20% or always which limits functionality or until the next charge. Basically, when battery saver is on, all the non-essential features and background tasks are turned off and push notifications are being sent less often. There is also the usage aspect and you can enter an application and you can allow it or not allow it to function in the background, even in power saving mode. So for example, you go to this game and you should be able to see if it can run in the background or not. Here you go, this is the option, allow app to run in the background, on or off, or allow it to run even when the battery is on. Usually it's a good idea to turn it off, especially with games that drain your battery a bit too much. And there is a little bit of an extra I want to show you, also related to battery stuff. If you go to the display section, there is here something called the uh, uh, battery saver brightness that will reduce screen brightness when the battery saver is active to cut even more juice. Overall the battery is good here but charging is a bit long and that's a bit of a bummer. Now as far as the acoustics are concerned we don't have bundled headphones and in order to get our music on we're going to use the Xbox Music app available right here and obviously including a link to the store with all the top charts and songs. I'm going to go ahead and listen to the tunes that don't have copyright and stuff like that. So let's turn it up. Speaker is right here.
Okay, now some conclusions. I have to say that the app has a minimalistic UI as usual. It doesn't have an included equalizer. Still, it has an equalizer separately in the settings area. Anyway, I have to say that the sound is crisp, it's clear. The volume is what I would call medium. Bass is quite good and uh, we got good voice in the songs that have voice. Also, there's no muffling on a flat surface. So no problem with that. Okay, so after we played around with the phone for a bit, we also used a decibel meter to measure its performance and let's see what came out of that test. So this is the decibel meter at the front of the phone, 82.1 decibels, while at the back, let's see how much we achieved here, 83.5 decibels, I would say we're doing fine, the iPhone 6 Plus scores around 83.8 decibels, the HTC Desire 820-84 decibels, and the Huawei Honor 6 Plus 82.7 decibels, so overall I'd say we're doing pretty fine. I also remember that we beat the LG G Flex 2 that scored a bit low. As I said before, there are some extra settings to play with in the acoustics area, and once again we're off to find that setting it's called audio here in the extra section and you can either play with presets like bass boost bass cut vocal boost vocal cut treble boost acoustic classical and all that or you can go with custom and mess around with the equalizer using these seven sliders or you can set it off and that's about it then you got the enhancements you can uh, trigger virtual surround with headphones or flip to silence which doesn't exactly have to do with the music so overall pretty good acoustics for this mid-ranger now it's time to analyze this display this big and crisp screen it's a 5.7 incher it has an IPS LCD panel it uses clear black technology the resolution is 1280 over 720 pixels and we got Gorilla Glass 3 protection here plus this screen has a density of 259 ppi we're going to be using the video app which is xbox video in case you're wondering and we're also going to be watching this test video right here keep in mind that there are some edges left here black edges you can probably see that but speaking of black the blacks are not deep here and let's watch the video We got pretty wide view angles here. Also pretty good colors. I was actually a bit surprised by these colors. Quite realistic. There's no oversaturation. If anything, the colors are a bit cold, which is not bad. So well calibrated colors. Okay behavior in sunlight. Quite good contrast. Wide angles, bright and clear. My main regret here is that we have this black area. And even if we change aspect, still it doesn't solve the problem it only corrects the top and bottom black edge. The options include subtitles and repeat and caption and that's about it. Okay, so this was the video aspect. You can only change the aspect and add subtitles. Overall, it's a good screen, especially as far as the brightness and colors go. The pixels, the pixels are of the RGB stripe kind and we once again did a test. This is what our microscope has shown, RGB stripe pixels. And we also measured the lux level using a lux meter with the two measurements, one indoor, 315 lux, and one outdoor with a huge score of 769 lux units, as you can see right here in full sunlight in the summer. This means we're able to beat the Samsung Galaxy Note 4 and its huge 682 lux. Also, we beat the iPhone 6 Plus and its 605 lux. Once again, in full sunlight on a sunny summer day. This is actually the second placed all-time phone tested here at gsnone.com after the champion Galaxy S6 Edge that scores around 900 lux, of course, better than 900 lux. So, second place phone, a mid-ranger with a very bright display. Now let's check out the settings for this display. Go to the settings area if possible. And we also go to the extras area where we can find the display right here and we can check, out, can check out options like sunlight readability on or off that improves screen readability in bright sunlight and indeed it does. We got battery saver brightness that we saw before and brightness profile that allows you to adjust the brightness of the screen. You can actually tweak the level of brightness for the lowest level, for the medium level and for the high level and increase them or decrease them as you please. Furthermore, you can also play with the color profile 
you got standard here included and you also have vivid cool or advanced that allow you to tweak the color temperature tint or color saturation to your liking so that's basically what you can do with the screen and how you can adjust the experience overall it's a very good screen and also very bright for a mid-range phone it even beats some handsets that were record breakers before here at gsndom.com so huge brightness good colors nothing to object about the display now it's time to discuss the camera at the back we got a 30 megapixel shooter with autofocus 4x digital zoom size optics and the sensor size is one third of an inch we also have f 2.0 aperture for this camera and a 28 millimeter focal length we got an led flash here bsi and rich capture while at the front we got a 5 megapixel selfie shooter here that has a wide angle lens f 2.4 aperture 24 millimeter focal length and can take full hd video it's time to check out the camera interface using this castle as you can see there is no physical camera button but you can trigger the camera from the drop down area if you want to so here is the camera ui right here with a pretty good frame rate and uh, i have to say that the camera app opens up reasonably fast we have a pretty okay focus speed as you can see we can focus on these areas of the castle pretty well especially for a mid-ranger this is the lumia camera application the default app at the top of the screen we get the uh, basic setup and then you can also trigger the expanded setup so let's start with the basic simple options we got a front camera shortcut here we got the flash options auto on or off and you also have rich capture that you can activate and then there are the expanded options that will include white balance let's uh, put the focus aside once again we got white balance here that opens up as a semicircle and includes several sub options then we got the focus modes you can move from macro to infinity then we got iso that goes from 64 to 3200 very impressive and then we're playing with the shutter speed we go from the 16,000 part of a second to four seconds once again impressive and find exposure minus three to plus three and that's how this device rolls this some of these settings are actually more impressive than the ones offered by the very much praised lg g4 that i've tested recently so these are the manual settings you can play with on the phone including white balance focus iso and all that and now let's talk about the rich capture rich capture is basically a series of captures that involves the flash some hdr and if you choose the flash and trigger rich capture you get a certain option if you choose the flash off you get another option basically it takes valid exposure shots and creates hdr dynamic flash and other features so there are three modes here mode number one is hdr it involves high contrast scenes then there's dynamic flash with or without flash let's select with activate dynamic flash and then we press that button and then we enter the picture we just taken it's processing right now and then there's a third mode dynamic exposure that would take long and short exposure shots with no flash and allow you to choose which one is best and also modify the image with, with a slider this is the shot and this is what rich capture is all about this is dynamic flash you can choose flash no flash or customize with a slider the degree of flash will be applying which is a pretty impressive feature so this is rich capture in a nutshell this was dynamic flash and now it's time for dynamic exposure and let's see how this plays out okay so we put the flash off keep rich capture and see what happens as far as i know the flash is off so auto off or on and here we go now let's see what happens here from what i saw it still triggered the flash with rich capture on and by the way this is probably one of the few ways to take an hdr shot with this phone with the uh, rich capture and high contrast scenes okay so let's see what came out this is the hdr i was talking about we got natural artistic no hdr and customized with a slider so we're lucky enough to pull this shot and play with the options 
Okay, now we're done with Rich Capture, people were wondering what that was, and now it's time to access the settings and see what's happening here. So we got the general options that include a timer, include also bracketing. Bracketing is a series of shots, 3 or 5 shots, with varied exposures, ranging from these values. And then aside from bracketing, we got these options for the camera press, camera key press and hold, framing grids, we also have these options, Lumia Selfie, Lumia Refocus and Lenses, then we got Aspect Ratio that can be 16 to 9 or 43, we also have Living Images, Focus Light that can be used flash settings, auto or always off, and then we got Video which offers a resolution of 720p, 24 frames per second, 25 or 30 frames per second, 1080p in 24, 25 or 30 frames per second. Ok, so you previously saw something called Living Images. This is Living Images, it's turned on. In order to see what this is, all, this is all about, we go to the Lumia Storyteller app. And here you can see the images coming to life. It's basically a shorter GIF if you want. And we go here. There's a guy with a skateboard, that should be a good example of that. And this is it. And this is the Living Image. It's basically just a slight motion of the image making it feel alive and you can turn it on or off during your capture or during your visualization. Ok, now let's go back to the camera and see those options a bit more. So back to the settings, we analyzed photo, video, info, general and all that. Now let's take them one by one, first of all Lumia selfie. Basically you can also take a selfie with the back camera, an auto selfie by detecting your face or setting a timer and if you open up, after taking the selfie, if you open up the dedicated uh, application, you should be able to customize your face here. So if you go to photos, you should be able to open up a picture with Lumia selfie. This is it, and then we go to the gallery, go to albums, camera roll, choose the photo of my face I've taken use this app, and then comes the customization. You can make it portrait, square, or landscape, you can flip it from one side to the other, and then when you're ok, you proceed to the next level, where you can tweak the eyes, Toning, soften, slim, smile or teeth, you can make the face slimmer if you want to. You can uh, increase the size of the eyes, enhance the eyes and do the usual tweaks. You can also apply effects. So this is what Lumia Selfie is all about. It's not all about just taking a selfie but also improving it and adding stuff above it. And then there's also Lumia Refocus. Well, this I also have to show you, let's see where that app went, Lumia Refocus is here and you can select the picture and then you can change focus. What it does is it takes a series of shots and then allows you to refocus, you can focus on this subject or on the lake behind it and it will blur the foreground as you can see here. You can also keep everything in focus or you can make the color pop can make this color pop and everything else feel black and white or you can make the grass, the green grass pop and everything else black and white. This is refocus in a nutshell, you've seen it before probably. And there are also more lenses here. Lenses which you can download from the Windows Phone Store, we got Bing Vision that scans QR codes and we got one shot with some nifty options and panorama that pretty much speaks for itself. Let's check out one shot. It has a ton of options but sometimes it's buggy and laggy and won't work fine. Ok, so here we go, as you can see there's a bit of a frame rate hitch here and the options include FX, zoom, we got contrast, we got exposure, we got saturation, sharpness, white balance, we even have temperature, shutter, scene, ISO, we got manual focus, grid, ratio, and of course a lot of filters to play with but the app is kind of buggy as I said before it's also pretty slow and takes a while to process ok by the way if you're planning on taking a video let's go to this section here you'll get those semicircles as well for white balance 
and also for exposure and for this mode here in the middle that I'm guessing is all about the focus. So semicircles available in the photo area, in the video area and now I guess it's time to actually take a picture of this castle that I have here. So the zoom is kind of slow. I said that the focus is fast and photo taking is fast but the zoom is kind of slow. Okay, now let's analyze the shot. As far as I can see, I've taken a pretty clear shot, very good level of detail, nice colors, nice exposure and white balance, but let's learn more from the gallery we've taken with this handset. Okay, so let's have a look at the gallery, as I said before, this is the photo section and let's go to camera roll and let's take them one by one. First things first, these shots were taken on a pretty cloudy day and let's have a look here. So we've got uh, good colors, some pretty clear shots, a good level of detail and we even took a panorama that has a resolution of uh, 12,289 over 2064 pixels and it looks pretty nice. Good exposure, good white balance and good level of detail again. Nice texture here on this wall. And we even played with rich capture under the bridge trying to achieve HDR with pretty decent results. The selfies look surprisingly good. I recently played with the LG G4 and I have to say that the colors of this model are actually a bit better than the one of the flagship that praises its front camera. More selfies and uh, once again a cloudy day. You can see the clouds here. We even play with rich capture again. So uh, crisp selfies and then we tried out the zoom, regular shot, then we zoomed in to a reasonable level of detail. But if you try to zoom in too much, you'll see some detail loss. If you zoom in at about 2x, it's okay. If you go further, it's not so okay. Overall, we got pretty much um, good exposure and one balance, especially for a cloudy day. And then we played with the macro shots and close-ups and the results were quite good, I like the texture of this um, metal faucet thingy. Also very nice focus, you can either focus on it or on the background. For cloudy day I'd say this camera handled it very well. There's the occasional whitish shot, there is a layer of white hue on top of it for no reason whatsoever, but that's seen more on the PC if you look at the gallery rather than on the phone. Excellent colors here. Aside from being a cloudy day, these shots were taken in the shade and they look quite nice. They even have that gloss that we usually associate to higher end smartphones. And some colors here, good colors, realistic colors, so no problems here. They weren't burnt, but there was nothing to burn them. It was not a sunny day. More shots of flowers looking quite well. Pretty good details here and very nice focus by blurring the background and focusing on the foreground which in this case is a rose. Realistic colors, nice texture, ok focus, not once have I lost focus while playing with this phone and also it focuses pretty fast and it's comfy here. I keep comparing this model to the HTC Desire 820, it's a quite similar phablet although it's a bit more powerful, well I find that this model beats that uh, uh, HTC phone, the HTC Desire 120, it beats its camera, however we scored below the Huawei Honor 6 Plus, also a tablet, also more powerful but it has a dual camera that produces much more impressive results. Overall detailed macros, very good colors and um, aside from the occasional white shot everything is ok here and by the way we have a pretty powerful flash, we took some indoor shots pretty impressive details here as well and the pictures look quite nice. For a mid-ranger it does its job perfectly. I would have to say uh, that it's above the Samsung Galaxy S4 if you want a comparison and it's the equal of the LG G2 or even better a bit. However, I have to mention that you will have to learn the Lumia features if you want to properly take advantage of this camera's features. Now we're off to the video section and the videos taken here were MP4 files in full HD, 30 frames per second with a bitrate of 17 mega per second. So let's take them one by one, starting off with video number one. This is it, as you can see it's a bit exaggeratedly white. However, the exposure change is quite good, pretty good acoustics, 
OK stabilization and clarity. OK, and let's see another video now. This is the second video. This is the best video we've taken with this phone. It's very crisp and clear. Pretty good focus. Nice colors. Some stabilization problems, but nothing major. Once again, most of the shots and videos can be excused by the lightning of a very, very cloudy day. The third video was taken in 720p for some reasons, probably just to test out that resolution, and it involves a lot of color. In spite of being 720p, it looks quite nice. There is a bit of focus loss here and there. The colors are excellent, I mean realistic and also vivid at the same time. The acoustics are good and the level of detail is quite okay for a HD capture. Okay, time to go to the last video and let's see what that one involves. Here we go, once again in the park and once again with flowers. This is once again a whitish sample, there is that white layer on top of the image, it's a full HD sample. Poor stabilization here sadly, good colors and some quality loss when zooming in, definite quality loss. In spite of not being great, this filming actually managed to be better than the one of the HTC Desire 820 that I keep mentioning, but the filming is below a phone that's popular now, even though cheaper, the iPhone 5 for example. Once again I must mention that I have to highlight the phone camera here that takes very good selfies. Overall the performance for this mid-range phone is ok camera wise, and if you want to do a bit of editing, we have some apps for you. And let's detail them. Basically, those apps that are shown with the purple icon are all about the Lumia action. We got the Lumia Creative Studio that will allow you to take some tweaks to your shots. As you can see, it takes a while to load. We got usual crop options. You can play with a few filters. And then you can modify stuff like uh, shadow, brightness, clarity or temperature or you can play with all sorts of blur, tilt, shift and manual features that you can customize. Of course there are more features here but I don't want to get into details because there's a ton of stuff you can do. So this was Lumia Creative Studio, there's also Lumia Moments. Basically you can take a picture from a video and create a GIF from a video and create living images out of videos. So I'm going to take this video and two options will appear. You can choose the best frame, which means taking a shot, a picture out of the video, or create an action shot which pretty much speaks for itself. Here I can choose the picture from the vid and keep it, and then the action shot that allows you to select a portion of the frames, select it, press this button, and even add some cool effects to it that I didn't quite enjoy, to be honest. The processing is taking a while and here you can see your action shot step by step maybe with some effects with some blur and stuff like that anyway you can create a living image out of a video and that's the main purpose we got here okay and then there is Lumia Storyteller which you saw briefly before It's a bit Zoe-like, if you've seen HTC Zoe in action, well, it takes all your shots and your videos and creates a sort of like a story, which means it takes them and makes them into a video, a short video with a music team, with some filters and even some text added, like this one here, story video preview, you can include a map attached to it and um, it will focus on the living images from what I saw. And if you want to edit it, you can obviously edit it, pressing this button here, change content, music or randomize. It's not Zoe, obviously, it doesn't have the social networking element, but it's a good start. Okay, we're done with the camera, once again, very good for a mid-ranger. It's time to go to the uh, analysis of the performance, and I'm going to start off with the temperature. So, this phone is able to score. 38.5 degrees Celsius after playing the game Riptide GP2 for 15 minutes, so there is no overheating here. As far as the web browser is concerned, Internet Explorer Mobile is here. And let's access gsmdome.com. 
that loaded reasonably fast, doesn't break any records, but at least it loads instantly all the website without pieces missing from it. And you can pinch to zoom easily and intuitively. You can check out the site in landscape mode, so browsing works without a problem. We also got the standard Windows Phone keyboard here with a bit of swipe action going on. I just written hello very fast, very comfy experience by the way. Okay, and then we have come to the section that's all about phone calling and dialing and things like that. And this is the dialer. Now I want to mention that we got a very loud ringtone here, very clear calls, but there's no noise cancelling microphone, so you may uh, register some loud background noises while you're chatting to some people. Okay, now it's time for the benchmarks and for that we have a full gallery here ready for you. Screenshots, a few benchmarks here and there. I'm going to start off with Antutu Beta. Since it's a beta, don't take it for granted. In Antutu Beta we scored 12,136 points. The Lumia 930 scores 25,375. Lumia 830, 12,000. So close to this one and the Sony Xperia E4G that's supposed to be a lower end phone with Android 32,000 so even a low end Android phone beats us which means that this is not exactly a very relevant benchmark. By the way the CPU inside the phone, this phone, is a pretty old one from 2013. It's a Cortex A7 quad core Snapdragon 400, could be better to be honest. This is Multibench 2. Our <coughs> Excuse me, our score was 15,647 in the CPU test, the data transfer test was 23,139 and the memory bench test was 05.972 and finally the graphics test was 47,7110. In the meantime, the Lumia 930 had 30 here. Uh, instead of 15,000 had 30,000 and also instead of 23,000 in the data transfer it had 41,000 and here in the memory bench it had 06 instead of 05 and finally in the graphics test a surprise it had 46 instead of 47 like us. Meanwhile the Lumia 1020 registered 15 here as well, 20 here in the data transfer, uh, only 2 in the memory band instead of 5 and finally 40 instead of 47 so we managed to beat the Lumia 1020 in the graphics section and also in the memory bench score. Next up let's see what we got. This one is uh, base mark 2 as far as I know and the overall score is 473. The Lumia 830 has 475, Lumia 930 has 1078 and the Lumia 1020 has 501 so we're in the ballpark of the Lumia 830 but not higher than that. Sun Spider was also tested with a pretty bad score here the higher is the worst so we had 12,000 excuse me we had 1,227 while the Lumia 930 had 514 which is a very good score and the Lumia 1020 911 so it could be much better. Basemark X is also here let's find it this is Basemark X with a score of 4,899 points, Lumia 930 was in the 20k area, Lumia 830 was uh, at 4,950, once again we're closer to that model, and finally Lumia 1020, 5,968. In the GFX test we scored 4.14 frames per second in the 1080p T-Rex off-screen test, as you can see here, or you can call it 232 frames while the Xperia E4, which is a low-end phone with Android, had 530 here, doubling our score, more than doubling it, and the Lumia 930 obviously a lot higher, 993 or 17.7 frames per second. Finally, the Lumia 830 had 4.2 frames per second or 235 frames, also a bit, but just a bit higher than us. Next up, let's see what we got here, other benchmarks. This one is a phone mark with a general score of 898, while the Lumia 930 had 1892, Lumia 1520 had uh, 1771 and the Lumia 1320 had 1240. Also the Lumia 820 had a score of 897. Okay, apparently it doesn't want to go further. We also tried the P benchmark test. We did the P test in uh, 
714 milliseconds while the HTC One Mini requires 293 milliseconds and the Nexus 4 431 milliseconds. Here the lower is the better and this is not a good score by any means. This is the relative benchmark which is always in beta, I never trust it. Anyway, 692, very low score. Ok, now this is the speed test result. In the download speed test we achieved 15.54 mega per second download and 10.78 mega per second upload which means uh, we were below the Lumia 930 that had 19 mega per second download, 16 mega per second upload and these are quite low values, usually all the phones we test are in the 20 mega per second ballpark so this is an unusually low Wi-Fi speed I have to say. There's also WP Bench here we scored 248 points, the Lumia 930 has 523, Lumia 1020 has 223, so it can be worse. And in case you're wondering, browser mark does not work on this device. The results we got here were in the area of the Lumia 830, pretty much there. There are pretty large benchmarks, these ones here, obviously there is no lag here, however, if there's some processing to do, like processing a photo or rendering a GIF or things like that, you'll see that there's a slight bit of lag and delay going on. Of course, Riptide GP2 runs fine, there's no problem with games, in spite of having a processor that's 2 years old, you can run any game in the Windows Phone Store, and I do mean any game, including Relic Run, that was launched just a few weeks ago. Riptide GP2, a game with 3D graphics, a racing game, that allows you to set up its graphics to the highest level. It's a benchmark game with water effects, speed effects, dynamic lighting and all that. And let's see how it runs. The frame rate is a bit choppy, but at least there's no delay when controlling the racer and the water looks quite fine. I have a feeling that this game uh, will not look as good when the third version comes, Riptide GP3, but maybe on the lowest settings it will run. Anyway, the game runs and a few other titles as well, there is no lag here, aside from the moments you are doing processing and things like that. As far as the OS goes, this is Windows Phone 8.1 with Lumia Denim, and this phone was actually announced at the same time with Windows 10, and it has the promise of being one of the first phones to get Windows 10 Mobile, so that's a good thing. It has folder support, we got a folder here, it opens up like that, it includes the music videos and things like that, and if you want you can create uh, another folder, you can drag one item on top of another, and I've just created a new folder which I can name and change the size of tiles if I want to. Okay, that was an example of folder creation, um, this area also includes uh, this OS also includes better organized settings. The settings menu has now been better organized. One of the best things here is that you have a search, finally, and there's organization into categories, network and wireless, personalization, account, system. Still, it's an endless scrolling list, but it's now better organized. We also have custom snooze alarms. There's an evolved Cortana, and there's the glance screen that now shows notification. Glance means this thing here, it shows uh, vital data on the screen like the time and the email you got and other information. Now you can also show notifications if you activate and if you get them obviously. You can double tap to activate the screen and see your lock screen. You can obviously resize tiles. You can see here a bunch of size that you can apply. more available obviously. Ok, other than that you also have transparent tiles, you can see here a background image peeking through the tiles I have here. And other things worth mentioning is that we got the action center right here with four customizable toggles at the top, notifications shown obviously, while the multitasking is done by pressing the back button and keeping it pressed and you can close stuff up by pressing the X, which reminds me a bit of iOS. Ok, Cortana can answer questions, can give cooking suggestions, plan trips, make jokes, find places, allow you to make a note or a reminder, so let's try it. Cortana, well, Cortana, tell me a joke. 
How do you catch a runaway laptop? With an internet. That fell a bit flat. Is it going to rain this week? The forecast shows sun with highs up to the high 20s. Plan a trip to Nevada. Okay, so it only offers suggestions. Anyway, Cortana has evolved, as you can see it's as fast as ever. And I have to remind you that last year it predicted 13 matches at the World Cup, which no other assistant has done before. Now let's check out the settings area, which I said evolved. And we got features here related to connectivity. And we also have uh, quiet hours, which is pretty much your do not disturb, with an inner circle that can break the rules. And then we have the driving mode that you can set up then we also have accessory apps, email and accounts, workplace we got screen rotation, project my screen storage sense that allows you to better organize your free space on your device we got battery saver and kids corner so the little ones can have their own space with their own apps and obviously password protection and parental control we also have an apps corner it allows other users to have access to your apps they will get a custom home screen and they'll get their own experience it's like they're using a totally new and different phone okay other than that we have um, the ability to collect motion data this is useful for a pedometer and fitness apps and other things like that and future apps that who know what uses will have okay we're off to the apps area this is the portion of the review where we view the pre-installed applications and there are a bundle here, we got a calendar here looking pretty basic with these organizations via day, via week or via month then we got the battery saver calculator, we got data sense keeping track of your downloads and usage setting a limit if you got 3G or 4G and want to spare some money then we got Facebook, we got Fitbit Flipboard is also here, food and drink from Bing, games, health and fitness, here drive plus is obviously here, not much has changed from the previous iterations, you will set a destination, it will work offline, you have bundled maps that you can download for free, so there is that, we got here maps, internet explorer, the bunch of Lumia apps that you already saw, Bing maps, money, there is music, there is news, there is also office obviously this one also hasn't changed, we're still waiting for an update in the meantime you can edit a document like this just fire it up tweak it you can go to the top of the document or to a certain area or you can write into the document easily you can change the format, highlight stuff change some font options and sync your changes to the cloud via OneDrive okay we got OneDrive, OneNote, OneShot, Outlook we also have uh, photos, PixArt, podcasts PixArt as far as I saw it's all about photo editing we got effects, collages, the option to draw or shop to buy more stuff we also have Skype, Sports, Storage Sense, The Store that has suffered some changes from the last time I saw it it's better organized, divided into categories and even have some more games and takes a while to load these are the main sections, looks very minimalistic and I've seen other better stores to be honest we got travel, we got wallet, weather and that's about it Okay, um, I have to say that this is pretty much it, there's a bit of bloatware if you really want to be drastic, but not in an exaggerated way. It's time for the verdict for the Microsoft Lumia 640X L LTE. On the pro side, we got the good selfies taken with the front camera, a very bright screen, it's actually the second brightest device we've ever tested at gsn.com, pretty good battery, almost 10 hours of video playback, good acoustics, it also takes good pictures with the main camera for a mid-ranger, nice Lumia apps, actually very nice Lumia apps, especially those purple ones with the photo features, I really appreciated them, there's no lag here unless you're doing some image processing, the games can run pretty fine and they will keep doing that for at least a year, that's my guess, the design feels pretty solid and the phone is in pole position for Windows 10 once the update comes. 
on the cone side, this is a massive and slippery phone. Its uh, corners are a bit prone to cracks, to be honest. And it has a little internal storage, about 3 or 4 GB left. The charging is quite long, about uh, 4 hours. Video capture could be better. The CPU is kind of old. The Wi-Fi speed could certainly use improvement. And there are no native Google apps to play with. And there are no replacements in the Windows Phone Store, which is a bit of a bummer if you're a Google user and switching to this device. So here at gsn1.com, we're off to giving it some grades. For the design, I'm giving it an 8. For the hardware, an 8.5 and for the um, OS and UI a 9 out of 10. The final grade is 8.5 out of 10. This is a good alternative to the HTC Desire 820. It's below the Huawei Honor models. It has an excellent screen, it has a good camera and it's a vacation and movie watching phone that from us gets an 8.5 out of 10. Keep in mind we got solid selfie camera, a solid back camera, but the video capture and old processor do not exactly make the perfect package. So 8.5 out of 10 here at gsndom.com. Bye bye.